Okay, in this uh, final lesson for the week, we're gonna, it's the title's called Modeling Parabolas. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some word problems. Now, here is the secret to word problems, okay? A lot of people have a very hard time, and again, I'm only talking about quadratics right now, although a lot can be true for all of them, but let's just talk about quadratics. When you're doing a quadratic word problem, they all boil down to one thing. Before you even try and answer the question, find an equation that models the parabola. Almost all of them you can't solve till you have an equation. So my first thing, as soon as I see a word problem, I don't worry about what it's asking me to do in the end. I just worry about coming up with an equation. I draw a diagram the best I can. Just, you know, not super accurate. Just label it though with the key points that I'm given. And I uh, come up with an equation. All right. So we're going to rely on all the skills we've already learned. There's nothing new. We're just going to the idea of this lesson is to investigate and think about how would you go about coming up with equations to solve word problems. Each word problem is different, so you're going to have to solve that. Um, but come up with an equation first and ask yourself, what did they give me? Did they give me the vertex? Did they give me the roots? What did they give me? Okay, so in this case, we have a bridge that spans a 30-meter wide river. So with most bridge questions, I'm not saying every time, but generally we got a bridge. I'm just going to draw it, and it's a shape of a parab parabolic arc, right? All right, so what we have here would be our two roots, right? Well, I don't even know what the numbers are, and here's my vertex. Now, I can put the y-axis wherever I want. Right now, I have the y-axis over here, right, going through 0, 0. So this would be 0, 0. But a lot of these problems, you can also set them up instead by moving the y-axis over here. Oops, so if I can just grab that, moving it over here. And this is no longer 0, 0. It's going to be something 0, right? Um, but we do know the x-coordinate here would be zero. Now we don't know what that is, right? So you have two ways of setting them up. So right off the bat, when you're trying to draw a picture, uh, go with that. All right, so those are your two m main ways of starting. Now generally, even when I start, I don't even have the y-axis on there. I'm just gonna put it over here for now. I don't even know for sure where it's gonna be, right? I just draw myself basically this arc here, and uh, right, I don't even necessarily know these points. I kind of just start with this, right? And I know those are some three major points. All right, now in this case, just since we're doing a bridge, pretty much all of them are the same, I'm just gonna make there's my y axis again, okay? All right, good enough. Okay, so y, or in this case, height, um, I'll just label it y for now, but we could use h for height or something like that, and I'll just use x for now, okay, for these. All right, so for sure, just because of where I put it, this point right here is zero, zero. So let me just label it my x, first x intercept is zero, zero. My other one, I don't know what it is yet, but I know it's gonna be something comma zero. All right, so let's get into the word problem here. A bridge spans a 30 mi meter wide river. So I think we're assuming that this is the river down here and it is 30 meters wide, right? So that would mean this coordinate right here is 30 comma zero, right? 30 over, all right? So again, I'm just trying to get a diagram and put points, get some points to work with, right? And sometimes you have to draw it a couple times. Obviously this comes with experience, so don't freak out. If your first drawing didn't work, try, like I said, moving that axis. I'm gonna draw it up here, right? You could, here's your line. You could put it here, right? Where this is zero, zero. I'll just keep this up here. And, or I could put it here, right? Where this is zero something. Sorry, I know I'm rambling around, but I'm just, the idea is, because people always have trouble, is it takes multiple attempts. Don't get upset. Sometimes you won't get it on the first try, right? All right. Um, so now we got that so far. We got two points. We have no idea what our vertex is yet. At two meters from either side of the start of the bridge, all right, so two meters in, um, the height is 10. Okay, so that gives us some more points. So they're saying if you go two meters over, like one meter, two meters, right? Two meters over, the height is going to be 10. All right, so that gives us another point. This right here would be two over 10 up. Now, you can also go backwards from here, right? If that's 30, this could be 29, 28. I'm going backwards two meters, and the height would also be 10. So I could even put an extra point there at 28, 10. Okay, cool. So that's all they gave us. Now, in this case, I'm not even asking to solve a problem. We can come up at the end what kind of questions we could ask. But so the point is, just find an equation. That's what I'm saying here. And the, most questions don't say to find the equation. This is your first priority. Find the equation. All right, whether it asks you to or not, every word problem you're gonna be able to solve by finding the equation. Focus on that first. Okay, now uh, we have two choices. We can use factored form or we can use vertex form, right? We don't have the vertex. Right now, we don't know anything about a vertex, right? I'm gonna label that right there. 
So if you don't know your vertex, there's no point in using vertex form. If you have your roots, which we do, right? Our two X intercepts, our roots. So here's one of them. Here's the other. Um, you should use factored form. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So factored form, write that here. If you have, right, the roots. Okay. If you have your X intercepts or roots, same thing, right? All right. So let's do that. So factor form looks like this. Y equals a X minus R X minus S. All right. Let's substitute in our two roots, which are 0, 0 and 30, 0. So we're going to sub in 0 and 30. So a X minus 0 and X minus 30. Now this should be cleaned up. We shouldn't leave it like that, right? Simplify that. So instead let's write a times X because X minus 0 is X times X minus 30. Okay. So our two roots are 0 and 30. All right. Now, to finish this off, just like the previous lesson, we have to find out what A is, okay? So if you don't have A, we're gonna have to find it. So what we're gonna do is take a point we haven't used so far and sub it in, okay? So I'm gonna write that here, sub in another point. It has to be a point we haven't used. All right, so uh, let's use either 210 or 2810. It doesn't really matter, so I'm gonna sub in 210, okay? So that would be this point right here. We haven't used that one yet, right? We used our two roots, but not that. Okay, so let's sub it in for X and Y. So that's a sloppy 10 there. All right, so 10 equals A times two, two minus 30, 10 equals, so what do we have? This is gonna give us negative 28. Negative 28 times two is negative 56. So negative 56 A, divide both sides by negative 56, and we get A equals negative 10 over 56, and we should reduce that. So just sorry to squish in the bottom here, divide them both by two and you get negative five over 28 for A. Okay, so we have our equation now. I'm just gonna write that down underneath our graph here. So our equation is Y equals negative five over 28. Sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background, he wants to go outside and bark at other dogs. Uh, X times X minus 30. So I just subbed into the equation up here, right? We had found that. We just had to figure out what A was. So that's what we got. So I subbed it in. And there we go. There's our equation. Okay, cool. So that was that's the secret to solving all these word problems. After that, we could come up with all kinds of different problems. Every question basically gives you enough information to find the equation. And then once you have the equation, then you can go back and answer the question. And here I didn't actually give us a question other than just telling you to find this equation, right? So a question might be, you know, what's the maximum height of the bridge? Or what's, so in that case, we'd have to find our vertex, right? And we'd use our skills. So they might say, what's the maximum height? Well, now I have an equation. I can sub in, I can figure that out. I can figure out my, right? I can find my axis symmetry. We don't have it here, but how would we do that, right? Our axis symmetry is right in the middle. So here, I'm gonna erase a little bit of work. I'm gonna pause and uh, so we can just talk about possible questions here, right? Okay, so I'm back. So I was saying, hey, why don't we solve for the axis of symmetry? All right, so, or like, what's our maximum height? So what's the middle, right? Our axis of symmetry is the middle of our bridge. How do we find that? Well, we have two roots. What's the middle of zero and 30, right? Oops, circled the wrong zero there, zero and 30. Or what's the middle you could even use of two and 28? It's the same middle, right? To find the middle of any of these from here to here, right? So I should really from there to there, right? Or from here to here, it's gonna give us the same middle. So all we do to do that is add the roots together. So X equals, uh, what do we got? Zero plus 30 and divided by two. So obviously the halfway point of 30 is 15. All right, so that's what this vertical line is here. X equals 15, which is also the X coordinate of our vertex. All right, so I could find the max height now by substituting 15 in. So if I wanna find my max height, right? max height, I would just substitute that number in and away we go. So y equals negative five divided by 28 times 15 times 15 minus 30. So that's negative 15, multiply it all together. And we're going to get approximately 40.8 meters would be the maximum height. So I could put that in over here, 40.8. So there's another question. They could also say, there's always the one, does a truck fit underneath a bridge, right? That's a common question. People get really panicky about that. They don't know how to answer it. 
And the question doesn't ask you to, but the first step is to find the equation. And then what you do is you take the dimensions of the truck and you say, well, can this truck, I'm just going to draw what's a box, but a truck, can this truck fit under this bridge? So all I'm going to do is figure out a coordinate here, one of these corners of the truck, right? To see if it's under or above. Well, how do I do that? I we take the dimensions of the truck and whatever they give us, and we can look at some of these later. But we'd sub it in, we'd get the x, then we'd sub that into, or we'd find the x coordinate, we'd sub it in, find the y coordinate. So again, I'm not really explaining how to do that, but what I'm trying to give you is the idea of what kind of questions could be coming, right? And the idea is, before you even worry about the details of the question, all you got to do is find the equation. So start with that. And if that's as far as you get, that's pretty good if you can find the equation. That's a great, like that's, you've solved 90% of the problem, right? 75%, whatever. The rest of it is just substituting numbers generally into that equation to find out stuff like we just did with the maximum height, right? I just use skills that we already learned to find that. Okay. So a lot of times you're just substituting things into the equation after that. All right. I'm going to do one more example and uh, that's going to be it for the week. Okay. Another word problem, really common one is generally something is shot or thrown into the air and comes back to the ground. It falls a parabolic shape, an arc or an arch of a parabola. So this is a common one. Now this one's, it's kind of silly. I don't know. I, it's one point it says it's an arrow cannon. I don't know what an arrow cannon is. Um, anyways, we're shooting an arrow from a cannon, I guess, into the sky and it travels the, in a parabolic arch. It hits the maximum height. You know, how long does it take? And uh, away we go. Now look at the questions. None of them say to find the equation. It just says, you know, when will it hit the ground? What will the time be at a certain height? None of this says to find the equation, but if we were marking this on a test or if it, you know, an exam question or a homework question, most of the work comes from finding the equation. And in this case, we'll say at least 50% of the work is just finding the equation. And that's what most of your marks are coming from too, or shouldn't most, but you know, a lot of them, right? All right. So we need to find the equation. So let's draw a picture of this. Now, generally this says he's standing on top of a building. So he's firing it. You know, I'm going to use that as my starting point. It goes up into the air. And it's going to come down. This is pretty common if you're if someone's firing something from a height that's not zero zero, right? Like not from the ground down there, right? If he was starting on the ground firing something, I might draw it like this instead, right? It's more like that, okay? Starting at zero zero. So that's the only difference there. So let's get rid of that. So we're not starting down here at zero zero. We're going to start. It says the building's 52 meters tall, right? So let's make that our first piece of information. Right here at zero seconds. We're 52 meters and maybe we should label our graph now because we're talking about distance and time, right? So our X axis is actually time. In this case, instead of using X, I'm going to use T for time because that makes sense. And instead of Y, let's use height. I'll use a capital H for height there. So there we go. Height and time comparing instead of uh, Y and X. All right. So that means when I write a, an ordered pair here, 0, 52, I mean the time is zero seconds and the height is 52 meters. Okay. So remember that with each point, I'm going to write that up here, right? We're doing time and height. So that's what each point means. All right. So uh, what else do they give us moving along here, right? Uh, at zero seconds on a stopwatch, he fires the arrow cannon. Okay. So it goes up and down. It hits its maximum height, 500 meters, uh, 500 meters at eight seconds. Okay. So maximum height, that should be a clue. This is talking about the vertex. If the vertex is our maximum or minimum. So right there's our vertex and it's eight seconds, right? Time is eight and height is 500. So eight, 500. Cool. That's all they give us, right? And they want us to answer some questions. When's it going to hit the ground? Well, that's one of the roots, right? It hits the ground here. That's a root. That's when it hits the ground. Um, what time will it be at a height of 300 meters? So when it's up here at 300 or something, right? What will the height be? Now this graph is really not drawn to scale. Okay. All right. So before I try to answer any of that, my goal is to find the equation. And that's, that's the difference between those who know how to get through these questions to those who don't. Some people just sit and they're like, well, I don't know how to start. You have to find the equation. All right. Now in this case, we're going to use vertex form versus the last one. Why? Because we were given the vertex, right? You need one of these two things. We always, we never really start with standard form. We start with vertex form or factored form. Factored form, if you have the roots, well, I don't know what this root is and I don't know what this root is over here. No clue, right? So we're not going to use that form. We got the vertex. All right, so we use vertex form. All right, so it's y equals ax minus h squared plus k. Okay, so we don't know what a is, but our vertex is h and k, so we can sub that in, right? Y equals a x. Oh, well, instead of using x and y, let's use h and t. So let's sub everything in like we're doing here. Okay, let me just label this here. We know our vertex. Write it over here. 
is 8500, and that's the T and H, or X and Y. Okay, so here we go. Let's use H for height, is A, um, T minus 8 squared plus 500. So I substitute everything, right? We don't know what A is. I replace the X with T, the Y with H. Um, little h is 8, k is 500. All right, so we got our equation. All we have to do now is solve for a. It's the same thing in the last couple lessons. Sub in another point. So sub in any point that we haven't used, okay? That's on our graph, not like 0, 0, okay? So we can't use this. That's not on our graph. But I can use 0, 52. That is, right? And I haven't used that yet. So let's sub in 0, 52. All right? So we're going to replace t with 0, h with 52. And away we go. 52 equals 0 times uh, 0 minus Oh, that's an A, sorry, up front. A times 0 minus 8 squared plus 500. So I've been recording all day, and I'm starting to lose my mind, I think. All right, so we just need to solve for A. So I'm going to subtract the 500 to move it over here. 52 minus 500. Uh, 0 minus A is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64, so we have 64A. All right, so 52 minus 500, negative 448. Divide both sides by 64, and that's what A is. And we can reduce it because this actually divides perfectly to get negative 7. All right, so we got our equation. So I'm just going to come over here and write that underneath. Um, height is equal to negative 7 times minus 8 squared plus 500. Okay. So as far as marks go, if you're like curious like when something like this gets marked, this is where the teachers, you know, really looking at the main focus of your understanding. Like this is the key to answer the question. Can you find an equation? That tells us a lot. Then after that, those are the extension questions like A, when will it hit the ground? B, what time, you know, yada, yada, yada. So let's answer those. So I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to erase this work I have here and we'll answer the other two questions. Okay, so let's answer part A here. When will it hit the ground? Well, what that's really asking us to find are what are the roots, right? When is it hitting the ground? Are our roots? Because here's one of our roots, right? What would the time be when height is zero? That's when it hits the ground. Now, there's another one on this side that we're going to ignore because our stopwatch started right here. That's where we started, right? And the parabola went up, down. So the stuff on the other side over here, it's theoretically part of the parabola, but it's not part of our word problem. We're not concerned with what was happening because the, the, the wasn't shot from down here, right? So these word problems, generally, the parabola has a start and, and an end, right? And they have a domain and range. We can talk about the domain and range at the end here too would be a good idea. Okay, so this is something, comma zero, and there's one over here that we don't really care about, but we'll just label it. There's another something, comma zero. So what are those somethings? Let's find out. All right, so to do that, we got to find the roots. Well, for any equation you've ever learned since uh, you started doing, you know, high school level math, you always find the roots. Those are your x-intercepts, right? You always find for any equation you ever encounter by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. All right, so let's do that. In this case, it's height, right? Set height equal to 0. So 0 equals negative 7 times t minus 8 squared plus 500. Okay, so what we're going to do here, you have two choices. Some people take the long, horrible way, which I would not recommend, which is they're going to simplify this and then use the quadratic formula, and it will work guaranteed but it will eat up time forever let's just isolate t so how are we going to do that first let's subtract 500 from both sides all right i'll do this in every step here so you can see it all right let's divide both sides by negative seven this should found, sound familiar because we've done this already in a couple lessons now right okay so we got that all right now i got to get rid of the square by taking the square roots so these two negatives obviously cancel out so i'm going to have the square root plus or minus the square root of 500 divided by 7 equals t minus 8. And finally, we're going to add 8 to both sides to get rid of that minus 8. So add 8 to the other side, and I'm just going to flip the whole thing around here. Time is going to be, for our roots, it's going to be 8 plus or minus the square root of 500 divided by 7. Now, that is the exact answer, right? If we want no decimals, you know, in the computer science world, engineering world, there's our precise no worrying about rounding decimal. But also in the real world, we want to know, you know, what time is that? No one's going to answer this. So let's let's go 500 divided by 7, right? Punch that in our calculator. Take the square root. And we get two numbers. One, one we're going to add, one we're going to subtract from t. All right, so let's see. So I punched that in my calculator here, and I've got 13.3. Uh, oh, no, that's not right. Is it? Hang on. Sorry. 
Sorry, I'm jumping ahead here, I think. There we go. I had a bunch of calculations written down. I get, and check along with your own calculator, I get time is approximately equal to 16 and a half seconds, or time is approximately equal to negative 0.5 seconds. Now, obviously, the negative 0.5 is over here on this side, right? So we, we don't need that. Let me just clean this up. I'm just going to label it, but negative 0.5, right? Nope. That's over here at 16.5 because we're not dealing with the negative time. We don't care about anything on that side. So there's the answer to our question. The answer is uh, when will the arrow hit the ground at approximately 16.5 seconds? Now, again, that took a little bit of work to show too. Um, approximately, what did I say? 16.5 seconds. But you can see you can't answer these questions without the, without the equation and they will not give you the equation, right? You have to figure it out first, okay? All right, let's answer the last part here. Uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Um, final part of the question. What time will the arrow be at a height of 300 meters? So what they're basically saying, what is t equal to, right? What is t equal to when h is 300? All this is, is just set in the formula. Here we go. Set h equal to 300 solve for t that's it again you have to have the formula to solve this so here we go we're going to set height equal to 300 equals negative 7 t minus 8 squared plus 5 now i'm going to literally do the same steps i just did in the last question i have to isolate t to find the time so 300 we're going to subtract 500 and then we're going to divide by negative 7 right that'll get rid of this and this and we're left with t minus 8 squared on the other side all right, so I'm going to do that. That's going to give me negative 200 divided by negative 7. So I'm going to have 200 over 7. And to get rid of the square here, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so now we have t minus 8. And then we're going to add 8. And I'm just going to flip it around. So t is approximately equal to 8 plus or minus 200 divided by 7. Once again, there's the exact answer. Okay, so when we say we want an exact answer, there it is. However, we want time. We want to talk in normal English here. So here we go. 200 divided by 7, take the square root, add or subtract from 8. In my calculator, I got two times. I got 13.3 seconds when I added to 8, and I got approximately 2.7 seconds when I subtracted from 8. So there's two possible times. They're both positive, right? Why is that? Well, let's think about it. Let's say this is our height here on our graph of about 300 meters. Well, there's a time when it's going up which would be the 13.3 because that's after eight seconds and there'd be the time or oh, that would be going down sorry and on the other side would be the time when it's going up so 2.7 300 right so this is be when it's going up because our arrow is traveling like this so it hits it on the way up and then it hits the vertex and then it comes back down and hits it again on the way down so there's two possible times these are both acceptable answers because it hits it twice Okay, so try the homework. I know the word problems can be a little intimidating, but remember, if you don't have an equation, that's the first goal of the question. That's your number one goal. Find the equation. Once you have it, then think about what would I sub into this equation to answer the question, all right? Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments on Edsby or send me a message, but I don't, whatever way you prefer, and I will try to help you guys out a lot this week, and I'm looking in for to different ways to, to help, so share with me. Um, what you've maybe been doing with other teachers that works well for them answering your questions, what program they're using. And I'm doing some research myself. So any anything that's really worked well on your end would be great for me to hear about. So thanks.